moving uh, and I want to share with you some some great tools that we've developed. In fact, if you guys didn't get my newsletter this week, then um, say, hey, Lee, send me the newsletter because, because uh, on the newsletter, uh, we've given you an offer. And I want to share with you what we're talking about uh, in that offer because uh, people are getting such incredible value from some of the key tools that we've developed over the years uh, for uh, Everyday Empowerment Institute. So uh, we're going to start very, very shortly, but I just want to check this. Uh, have I got the recording? Yes, it's recording. Uh, I won't bother sharing the screen. So uh, who's there? Ralphie. Hope you're keeping fit, Ralphie. Ralphie, great water polo player there in Cronulla. Of course, Shelda, great water polo player here in, in Perth. Miss Fitness, the dancer as well. Um, get yourself some water, folks, because you always need to make sure you're hydrated. Keep that golden voice of Lee uh, going. What keeps popping up on my phone is everything from messages as far as um, reminders, jobs to do, but also the COVID app. Paul Magiatis is online. Hi, Paul. How are you going, mate? Thanks for, thanks for being here. That's on Instagram Live. So welcome. It's nine o'clock on a Tuesday morning and welcome to our Tuesday morning webinar. Uh, this is a chance for Aussies, Australians, but even at times I've had Ken Edwards, who's over there in Florida, touching base with me as well to help you rebound and reboot. But uh, what I've learned in these Tuesday morning seminars is if we cover too much uh, feedback is, Lee, you're, you're covering too much information, mate. So um, I'm gonna just cover a couple of key things this morning to help you uh, take your business, take your sales, take your life to the next level. Um, the Everyday Empowerment Institute, our mission is this. We wanna empower the world one business at a time. Um, knowing that our Traditional education, school, I went to Eagle Rock High School. Ralphie, I don't know if you went to Sutherland High or somewhere there in Cronulla. Um, but whatever we did in our traditional education, uh, well, they don't teach us the key tools for financial freedom. Did we do classes on financial freedom? No. Did we do classes on how to rebound from uh, a coronavirus or when your business is pushed right to the wall or even to set up a business? I don't recall at uh, Piercy, John Pierce, my good teacher, my economics teacher, um, you know, I think at schools, they need to be setting up classes. We're talking about Australia being a great country and, and being self-sufficient. We need to train the kids how to run businesses, let alone how to help people in business run their business better. So one of the principles that we work on at Everyday Empowerment Institute, besides the fact we want to give you simple, easy, effective solutions, S-E-E, -E, simple, easy, effective solutions to do what? To increase profitability, to increase growth. We all love to be busy, but are we doing the right things that actually help us? I mean, Shelter ran a dancing business, I remember over here in, in Perth. Um, people love dancing, love water polo, uh, love uh, teaching. I, I certainly love teaching people, but at the same time, you need to have a business and an ecosystem that provides the system for financial freedom. So uh, there's a number of key values that we operate on. One, we want everybody to be financially free. We want to empower people to be financially free and we want people to be self-sufficient, self-determined, and that therefore means self-mastery. You can't get self-sufficiency and self-determination unless you have self-mastery. And again, when were we taught self-mastery uh, in, in our school days or even at university? Uh, for, by way of background, guys, you know, I've been involved in coaching, training, consulting, running my own business really now for almost 40 years. Work with everyone from British Standards Institute. We did that over the last uh, two years uh, in, uh, across the Asia Pacific. West Australian newspapers, Seven West Media, uh, Telstra, Optus, uh, Norton Smiles, the, who are lawyers here in Perth, um, community newspapers, the uh, health department, Volcom, I'm looking at Subway, uh, Dimix, a whole range of organizations to help them optimize potential looking at amcom wesbeam it goes on and on uh, people in business over 300 businesses really over the last 30 years bethany homes helping people in teams realize their full potential to grow and uh, i want to touch on a couple of things that are so important if you're serious about your business growth and paul magiatis you know that um, when we're working with people by the way these days we talk about what we say whole of person whole of business transformation because paul you know anyone in business knows ralphie french knows that your business 
can't transform unless you're willing to look in the mirror and say, what have I been doing? How have I been thinking? Um, how big has my ego been or even got in the way of me getting where I want to go? Do I think I know it all? Danger, danger. Oh, I, know, I know all that. I've been there, done that. Really, you can only look at your results. Life is a terrible thing in that regard and it's like a mirror. It's holding up a mirror at, and our results are doing just that. So I want to talk to you about the area today of generating revenue. Terry Cuthbert, how are you going, mate? Thanks for being on board. People are coming on board. Um, I'm just going to talk to you about some of the problems we see in companies where there's no agreed sales system, where we just hire people and say, well, you can sell, go and do it. And what we find is if you don't have a system, people make up their own system. Not only that, if you don't have a system, in most cases, they'll be at the customer's buying system. They'll be at the effect of the customer's buying system. And so you've got to have a sales system. Um, otherwise, you're going to get inconsistent results because then you don't know which part of my sales process went wrong. Um, if you have no system, you've got no common language to share best practice. And so therefore, what did Bob do or what did Paul do? Paul Lilliman, how are you going, mate? Paul, uh, Hewlett Packard did a lot of training with you guys. Um, but at the same time, you've got to be willing to look in the mirror and go, I didn't get that business. Do I blame the client or do I blame my system? You can easily blame your client because your ego says, I need to blame the client. But you need to look at the system to go, okay, I need to take 100%, in fact, 110% responsibility for not getting that business. What is it that went wrong with my system? Point four is uh, when you don't have a sales system, you've got no common language and I can guarantee you, you're going to get average to below average results because how do you, how do you talk about what went on in that meeting? Did you use the language? Did you ask what we call strategic questions? Did you, how can you debrief if you don't have a common language? Um, and of course, the other thing is, as you want to grow your business, you need to induct and train new people. So if you don't have a system, how can you grow the business? Hi, Pip O'Connell, how are you going? She's a media personality, Pip, how are you going? Keeping very fit as well. What I'm talking about, Pip, today is people in business, I want people to be financially free because I want them learning how to generate business. That's what we do at Everyday Empowerment Institute is helping people have a system to actually grow their business um, and scale a team. Now, of course, if you don't have a system, then it's much harder to actually teach and grow. There's that old saying, I think it came from a George Bernard Shaw play, those that can do and those that can't teach. But what even my friend who threw that in my face 30 years ago said, mate, you know what? I realized I've had to be teaching my people because if I can't teach people to do the jobs I used to do, then how can I grow and scale my business? Or even better, how can I grow and scale my business and then actually sell the business? It's, it's worth nothing if it only revolves around me. So we need to have systems. So here are some stats. Companies that follow a well-defined sales process are 33% more likely to be high performers. The win rate exceeds 50% for two thirds of companies that have a defined process in place. And that's research from worldwide organization Salesforce. Companies that follow a well-defined sales process are 33% more likely to be high performance. In other words, just by capturing a sales process, you've just increased your chances of becoming a high performer. And then you increase your win rate, you increase your conversion rate. The win rate exceeds 50% for two thirds of companies that have a defined process. In other words, two thirds of companies that have a sales process in place have a conversion rate of well over 50%. I've been working at times with a member at Architect whose win rate was less than 10%. In other words, you'd go for 10 jobs and win less than one of them. Just imagine all the work that was going on to put proposals and spend time with prospects, but because he didn't have a process or the process he had was weak, it didn't work. So we helped him rearrange that process to become more conscious of his process. In fact, what we're doing, and I'm working with a group just this afternoon, where we've captured the sales process where the group had never had a conversation around what is our process? What is the process from how we approach a client right through to how we have a conversation with that client to how we actually then win the business, let alone then what do we do to retain and grow the account? 
So let's take a look at some other statistics here. According, this is a study done by Motorola, the big telecommunications company. According to a recent report, every dollar invested in sales training returned a $29 in incremental revenues. In other words, for every dollar Motorola invested in training their people in how to sell, how to have good conversations with customers, they got a $29 return in revenues. Come on, it becomes a no brainer. Uh, here's another one. According to a recent report, the best sales training will improve the performance of an individual on average by 20%. In other words, some will be 30, 40, 50%, some will be five and 10%. If you wanted a 20% boost, Louis John, how are you going, mate? Thanks for joining us. Um, if you wanted a boost of 20% across the company in terms of revenue, sales performance, why wouldn't you spend time training, coaching the sales team? It, it makes complete sense. Now, what we've done and what I've done, and I've got to say my background when it comes to sales was, uh, I wasn't that interested in selling. You know, my, my, um, I went to Melbourne University and then I went over here to do a master's degree in Perth. And I thought if I went to university, um, and this is what they told me at uni, go to university, get your degree, get your master's degree, people will be a path to your door. You just hang out your shingle and everything will be okay. Of course, I soon learned that wasn't true. That's what we call BS. It's a belief system, but it's an FBS, false belief system doesn't empower, doesn't help, in fact, gets right in the way. So my business partner at the time, Gary, it said, mate, you need to learn how to sell. I said, mate, you do the selling, I'll be the professional. I'll wear the white lab coat and the stethoscope and we'll check people's pulses and help people be fit and all those things. Uh, I'll write things and you you do the selling. Um, over time, I learned that that's not very helpful. You're trying to run your own business, you have to know the science of having a structured conversation. In fact, we call it the R factor. The relationship equals frequency times quality of contact. And so if you wanna have quality contact with customers, clearly you wanna be helping them add value. You wanna help solve problems for them. So where are your questions? Where's it written down for you? Um, where's your plan? So what we've got is a, we've deconstructed it. We've looked at all the best sales systems around the world and worked with this and created this system over the last 20 years that we've now worked with clients all around the world with. And we put it into a color zone system where we talk about everything that happens before the sale is in what we call the yellow zone, the yellow zone, your prospecting, your planning, your training, your mental preparation, your physical preparation. Um, in fact, we talk about 10 P's, your, 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 your branding, your strategy, all of that needs to be done correctly. In fact, that's what we've done with the clients we're working with this afternoon, where there's a whole lot of yellow zone planning we've done and capturing so that we can then prepare the team to actually go and have structured conversations. In fact, this afternoon, um, we're working through a number of exercises. We call it the customer planning tool. We talk about um, the three Ps, yeah, which I'll talk to you about shortly. Um, we've deconstructed it so that we, you can teach it, so you can have a common language. Um, so that's the yellow zone. The, the orange zone is that zone where you connect, you develop rapport. And there's a whole lot of things that happen because people say, Lee, I want you to help me close more sales. But if you don't get the yellow zone, the preparation and the positioning right, and you don't then get what happens in that first 60 seconds and five minutes with the client right, you're putting yourself in a very difficult position. Um, relax and relate. We talk about relax and relate. We talk about rapport building because where you're heading is you want to go into blue zone, which is discover the need. We say go swimming in the blue zone. There's a great line that says or a selling law that literally says, do not prescribe until you've diagnosed. Most salespeople, most untrained salespeople, most people are so in love with their business, they want to jump straight into it. Let me talk about my product. Let me talk about our company. Let me show you what our office looks like. Let, let, sh let me show you a brochure. They don't do any rapport building. They don't do enough needs discovery and they go into the sales presentation. They think they're selling pots and pans or encyclopedias or vacuum cleaners in 1962. No rather than a consultative value-based sales approach. Discover the need, discover the need, discover the need. Um, 
and only after you've discovered the need and done a number of other things do you go into the sales presentation and even then it's not a presentation it's a conversation conversation terry mulligan how are you going mate so terry i'm talking here about our sales system that if you don't have a sales system and i know you're looking to develop one for your new company um if you don't have a sales system the untrained person is at the effect of the buyer and invariably what will happen is they'll sell on price, not on value. They'll sell on this is our product and this is the price and this is how it compares to the competition and this is why we should be cheaper than the competition uh, and they're not selling on solving the customer's problem, solving value. And of course, once you have presented, and there's a whole process we've done to deconstruct that, then you move into the actual summarizing and the closing of the sale. And then in amongst all of that, there may well be objections and concerns. Now, again, the untrained person has little or no understanding of how to handle objections and concerns. Knowing that when the customer says, well, I'm a bit worried about your delivery. I'm a bit worried about your packaging. I'm a bit worried about that that's actually a buying signal. In fact, I'm just thinking back to when we did work with Asa Abloy uh, way back before the 2000 Olympics. And they wanted to get the lock business of the whole of the Sydney Olympic Stadium and the uh, Olympic Village. And it's only in the discussing of when the people said, mate, well, we're a bit worried about your packaging, mate. These games have got to be green games. So luckily, or by training, the Asa Abloy salesperson, uh, in fact, one of the managers, I think at the time, had said, so what do we need to do for you guys to be comfortable about doing business with us. I mean, are you happy with the quality of our locks? Are you happy that we can supply and install and do the locks the way you want them done? Yeah, yes, mate. But the problem is, the problem that we got is your packaging. This is the green games. And so we, we don't need all that packaging. So they said, as their abloy said, so this is a beautiful story. So if we eliminate the packaging, so we aren't creating waste and we align with the green games, that is environmentally free Olympic games, would you do business with us? You know, get what I just did then? If we do X, Y, Z, meeting your needs, would you do business with us? In other words, they took the objection, the concern, and turned it into a buying opportunity. In fact, a closing opportunity, which the untrained person doesn't even think, oh my God, they don't do business with us because of our packaging, which is a whole other principle we work on, which is um, what is your relationship with the word no? What is your, how do you respond internally when the client has a concern or an objection? You need to train your people in how to do that. And that's part of the green zone. And then of course, there's the purple zone, which is how do I keep growing the account, building long-term relationships with clients? Um, the purple patch. So the business keeps coming in through repeat business and referrals. Now this is a system with a hundred different moving parts. And if you don't train your people in and don't train them on a regular basis, then they will be missing out on business. This is an Olympic sport folks. It's actually a sport that is a sport of survival called how do I generate business? How do I become self-determined? How do I have self-mastery, particularly mastery around generating business? And here we are, coronavirus is over, business is back, and it's game on. It's game on. So how well are you ready to go with your team to get your team and yourself back out in that marketplace, having quality conversations with people so that you are generating business? So we've taken it even a step further with what we call our consultative selling model um, in that orange zone relating stage. What we know is the number one objection is no trust. I don't trust you. I don't know you. I don't trust you. I might not even like you. So I need to deal with and overcome that objection in the relating phase, the no trust phase. Um, in the discovery phase, um, the number one objection is no need. So we need to make sure we identify the need. And not only do we identify the need, but what we do is we start to quantify that need as well. Hi, Jane. Jane up in um, Thailand there, Phuket. How are you going? Say good day to Colin for me. Um, Paul Lilliman's down here. Paul Lilliman, 
Colin's partner up in Thailand is just saying good day to us, mate. It's all part of the village. So orange zone, you've got to overcome the no trust. Blue zone, you need to overcome the no need. Um, now, we also have what we call a pre-frame statement before you even go into needs discovery, a way of setting up that needs discovery. In other words, I'm going to go through some questions right now, if that's okay with you. I'm going to make some notes, if that's all right. And I want to really discover what your needs are. And if we can meet your needs and solve your problems for you, and you can see that it's, it's uh, affordable and, and makes sense, uh, would you be interested in doing business with us today? Would you be interested in taking it to the next step? A pre-qualifying statement. Now, the red zone is when we move into advocating and presenting solution. And the number one objection we have there is I think, I don't think you can be of any help. So you have to establish that you, your business will be of help. So we overcome the no need, no trust, no help. And you need to be qualifying. So can you see that being of help? that work for you guys can you see how what we do here so there's a whole process we've got to show you how to do that professionally there's also at the back end of the blue zone what we call the qualifying statement of we call it conceptual agreement of value so if we can solve that for you and it meets all your needs and you can see it makes sense economically and you can see that we're a good fit uh, would you take action on that you need to qualify 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 now if you haven't trained your people in how to qualify, that's going to cost you big time as well. Because the green zone is where we're moving into the actual closing of the sale. We call it supporting the sale. Now, in most cases, you'll know more about what the solution is going to look like in the client's business than they will. So sometimes you need to support them because they're basing their decision based on old knowledge, whereas you have different knowledge. You've got to train your people in that. Otherwise, the other objection in the green zone no hurry there's no hurry well you know that in most cases every day that you don't take advantage of your solution whether it be shelter in the dance every day you don't do dancing is another day you don't get a chance to enjoy it every day you don't do swimming training colin is in, in in thailand every day you don't do swimming training is a day you don't get fit every day you don't do the sales Training is another day you're missing out on sales. Another week you're missing out on sales. Another month you're missing out on sales. Why would you do that to yourself? You want to create hurry as in get the benefit of our product today, tomorrow, not three months from now. So this is the training you want to be putting with your people. Now, what we've done is I have deconstructed it. There's a whole integrated system here. Yellow, orange, blue, red, green, purple, the integrated system and how that links in with your whole sales management system to optimize sales and performance. And in fact, what we've done, we've also got a sales management system of how you select, induct, recruit, train. So we've deconstructed it. And I've got to tell you, this works an absolute trick. We've created incredible breakthroughs for our clients, not only in Australia, but around uh, Asia in the last 12 months. So if you want to get access to it, touch base. And in fact, what, what we're going to do today, I'm going to share with you one of the tools that we use at the back end of the blue zone. We call it SDS. Barry Moan, how are you, mate? Thanks for joining us. At the back end of the blue zone, you need to make sure that people have followed the system. We call it the structured debrief process. You see, the yellow zone is everything we do before we touch base with clients. We call it positioning, lead attraction, and of course, preparing. We talk about the active and the passive lead generation strategies. And that's again what I'm uh, doing with my client. And we put it into a manual form of we're working with those clients to implement those lead attraction. Because in most cases, most people have maybe one or two lead attraction strategies. But what happens when you've got five, six, or 10 lead attraction strategies and you get good at and you do the reps and you do the training? to use not just one lead attraction strategy, but the two, three, four, five, ten. 10. We have a whole system to help you, help you do that, to ideally double or triple the number of leads that you get. Then we want to take you on a journey so that during you have a quality prospect conversion success system, taking people through the orange, blue, red, green zones, so that whether it be face-to-face, -face, whether it be on the phone, whether it be in groups, whether it be doing Zoom, whether it be doing webinars, um, you have systems to have quality conversations with people so that then you convert. 
And that's why you need to be doing the reps on a daily basis. You've got to build a culture, build an ecosystem within your business where people are all talking the same language. That's exactly what we're going to be doing with this client this afternoon. Talking the language of high performance, professional business to business sales, but also in retail as well. Probably one of the people we're talking with in the group yesterday uh, worked with Chanel and uh, the whole ecosystem that Chanel creates, as do a lot of those big brands, where the people working in the retail store are not just advocates, but they're evangelists for the brand. Uh, and so that's what, I'm, again, I'm doing with these guys this afternoon. I said, you guys need to be brand evangelists. I said, if you go to an Apple store, they're brand evangelists down there. If you go to a Chanel store, they're brand evangelists. Um, you want people in your store, in your business, being brand evangelists. And therefore, they need training how to do that. You can't just dip them in or say, here, read this brochure, and you become a brand evangelist. Of course not, because selling is a transference of emotion, transference of confidence, transference of value. Your brand evangelist, say at Apple, for example, um, those guys are in love with the product and in love with the value and in love with the transformation that those products deliver. Same with you. So then off the back end of that in the blue zone is where we, the, sorry, the purple zone is where we have our client retention and growth. We want repeat business and referrals. So you want a system in place in the purple zone for, here it is here, purple zone. We've deconstructed all of the components there. Let's take a look at it. Everything from referrals, testimonials. We've talked about strategy we call the doctor of sales strategy. That works a treat. How you use the CRM and database, how you do sales meetings, how you do daily deliberate practice, uh, how you do what we call the value added diary strategy. Um, and of course, in amongst all that becomes annual goal setting and preview and review. So we deconstruct it. So as a business owner, manager, you, we can tailor that and customize that to your business. Terry, that's what we want to do with you guys, right? So, um, client, but if, you, if it's not written down, it's not a plan. If it's not written down, Terry, it's not a plan. It's a wish list. Uh, and then, of course, you need to be trained and embedded, not just used occasionally, but embedded, embedded into the business. Uh, so we have client growth strategies. So again, this afternoon, we're working with the guys on client growth strategies. So we want to increase leads to then increase conversion to then increase retention. When we do those three things, increase leads, increase conversion, increase retention, and we get an exponential growth in the business. So that's what we want to do uh, with you guys. Now, whether it be uh, common blocks to the closing sales, fear, 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 fear of picking up the phone fear of having the conversation, fear of handling the customer's concerns and objections. So then, of course, fear of working with the client to overcome their fear of doing business with you. So you've got to deal with fear, your attitude, the customer's attitude, the lack of confidence, the lack of trust. You've got to have the skills and tools to do that. Um, uh, there's the other blockages to closing the sale of assuming the customer needs more time. They need more time to think about it, boss. They need more time. Why do they need more time? They want the benefits today, so why do they need more time in three months? The other big blockage to over closing sales is people don't have the skills to flush out objections. Flushing out the objection. So is there anything stopping you from going ahead? What's your concern right now? Having the courage to ask those questions and train your people in how to do that. Um, oh, but I don't want to appear pushy, Lee. Uh, I, I just want to give them their space. We're trying to generate business. So as a business generator, you need to understand that's a fear in the mind of the customer. You need to overcome the fear and get them focusing on the positive future of using your products or services, positive future of doing swimming training, the positive future of doing dance lessons, the positive future of you know buying that pen, the positive future of you know getting an iPhone or an iPad. So the sales circle of life system, well, it works so incredibly well for all of our clients. And I know it would work incredibly well in your business as well. You're saying, well, yeah, okay, Lee, well, what do I do? What's the first step? Well, the, one of the first steps, and this is what we put in our newsletter this week, is the, Chris Mooney, how are you going, mate? The first, uh, the thing we put in our newsletter this week is the SDS, the sales debrief system. 
the sales debrief system. And it's a tool I created for a client years ago, which people got incredible value from. We call the how, how did we go? How did we go system? How did we go? It's a sales debriefing checklist for sales managers and sales team members. And what we do in that how did we go system is we've broken it down and say, okay, um, what are all the things you needed to have done successfully in the yellow zone? Let me just see if I can go across to it here. In um, the how did we go? Here it is. I've got it here. So it links in with our deliberate practice system of training your people on a regular basis, but people rate themselves. One is terrible, two, barely acceptable and have to improve, three, average, shows promise but needs uh, more work, four is good, acceptable performance level for um, uh, our business, great, good, oh, that's good, and exceptional is five, mate, you're an industry leader, you demonstrate best practice. And in fact, what we have done as part of that whole process is we've actually created a, a system within the system of what level are you of, of skill. We want people moving up from red, which is disaster, where they think they know it all and don't even want any training because they're, they're know-it-alls, right through to the, the violet level at the upper level of the, the spectrum where they are masters and they are teaching others. So it's a question of what level of demonstration, because we say, you know, don't remonstrate. People, oh, I don't do sales training. Oh, I don't need sales training. Don't, de don't remonstrate, demonstrate. How well do you prospect? How well do you use the phone? How well do you take a proposal in and present it and close it? How well do you do that? How well do you actually run a team meeting? So accountability, accountability and debrief and review. So, uh, one is terrible, five is exceptional. And so then we go to, right, um, in the pre-meeting, before we even went out and saw a client, there's eight key areas in that checklist, everything from how well do we develop rapport and position ourselves on the phone call? Um, uh, how well, what, how, email, actually, this is interesting. Point three here is, did we send an email confirming the meeting? Just the other day, one of the guys said, Lee, let me show you an email I'm sent to one of my prospects. It was terrible. It was a block of text, no subheadings, no key points, no calls to action, no positioning. The footer in the email didn't have any detail of him or how to contact him. It was, what the hell was going through his head? Um, so just in emails can either help set you up for success before the sale or not. Um, here's another point. How well did we position ourselves as authorities or experts or having credibility? In other words, before I even go to the meeting, what did I do? Hi, Fia, how are you? Um, Fia Rigo, super accountant, financial freedom, very good. Um, uh, how well did we position ourselves before we even go and meet with the prospect? So we call that pre-framing. So there's the pre-meeting checklist. There's eight points in the pre-meeting checklist. Then we go to what happens in the actual meeting. We call it the needs discovery meeting. Point one is uh, presentation. How do I even look? What is my presentation? Do, am I, my, what, my color coordination, my, am I cleanly shaven? You know, I'll never forget, um, a guy was trying to sell me something at one stage years ago. He, he missed parts of his face, it was shaving. His tie wasn't done. There was a soup stain on his shirt. Well, it's like, mate, if you can't even dress yourself, what's your attention to detail when it comes to actually helping me with my business? So he was way behind the eight ball before he even started. Then there's things like, um, was my car clean and neat? I never forget one of my clients um, who founded a business that in fact uh, went public. Uh, he's a multi squillionaire these days, but he has incredible attention to detail. Uh, so he says, many times I'll look out the window and take a look at the person's car. You know, milk cartons will fall out the car. And I go, hang on, this guy can't clean his car. What are the chances of them actually, again, having attention? Would I, do I want to do business with someone whose car has got mud all over it? What does that tell me about the guy? Oh, he might have just come off his farm. So, yeah, but he gets in, then he starts to look for patterns. The guy's already starting from behind the eight ball before. Now, of course, point three, was my breath fresh, my face hair, and if you're a female, makeup, was it neat? Um, I mean, we've been working with people who either smokers or uh, coffee drinkers get there. Oh my God, the smell of coffee. What the hell? Uh, again, all these little things, first impressions make all the difference. So 
then it goes on. How well did I use POMVIC, which is the needs discovery system that we teach people asking strategic questions? How well did I handle concerns? Did I ballpark them? Uh, it goes on. There's 15 key points in that first needs discovery um, meeting. Mark Huggins, how are you going, Huggo? Um, then we go to the next part, which is the proposal action plan closing meeting. Again, there's, let me look, how many points are there? There's 15 key points on that list as well to debrief. So here is a chance for you as an individual to debrief. How did I go with that meeting? Where did I go wrong? What could I have done differently or better? And then two, you can do it with a manager or a teammate that you go out on your meetings with to do a SDS, structured debrief session. Not just how was that? Oh, that went pretty well. Oh, good, okay. No, structured. So every meeting with a prospect is an opportunity to learn something. Now, if you want to get a copy of this, um, I'm going to give you the link that you can go to and get a copy of this uh, structured. No, no questions asked, but come and get it because we want to empower you. That's what we say, empowering the world, one business at a time, one, one person at a time, one salesperson, one entrepreneur at a time. And then after the meeting, there's, okay, did we send a thank you email? Did we send out a welcome pack? Um, did we uh, follow up with a phone call? Uh, if you made a sale, did you follow up with a bottle of wine? Tessa, how are you going? Um, what are the things you need to do at the back end? Did you make sure all the details are on the CRM? So we have your overall comments and feedback. What did you learn? And what can you do to improve for next time? And then sit with your buddy or your mentor or your manager and sit down and say, what do we learn? How can I improve it for next time? Because what we're doing is we raise our level of consciousness. As Einstein once said, um, the problems we have facing us have to be solved with different thinking than the thinking that we used when we created the problem. In other words, you want to get the business, you want to get better at this game, then you raise your level of consciousness, you raise your level of understanding when it comes to sales. So that's our structured debrief, the how do we go document, and you're welcome to get a copy of it. Uh, if you were on the newsletter this week, then you can access the link via the newsletter. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to tell you very shortly how to go to the link. In fact, it's sellserveprosper.com. My God, it's actually quite difficult. It's an EEI sales debrief download. What I'm going to do is put that link in this, um, in these, what's it called, the comment section, so you can get access to it. As I said, don't worry, I'm going to put this link in the comment section for you so you can get access to the how do we go structured debrief. Richard Pengali, how are you, mate? What, you, you're coming in the back end of this webinar this morning, mate, but what I've just been talking about is the importance of systems, and this is a structured debriefing system that we use with our clients, and I'm giving it to people uh, as a gift, particularly as an end of financial year gift, because now's the time for action. We're coming back from COVID, and people need to follow systems game plans so that you can actually convert better in business. So the page to go to, oh yes, well there it is. I'll, I'll send that to you as well. It's called Download Your Free, How Did I Go Sales Debrief Checklist here. It's a checklist we know when you use it, um, our clients tend to increase their conversion rate by 20% or more. It's 100% free and you can get access to it. Um, if you guys aren't on my email list, maybe you can put a, a note, say, hey, get me on the email list if you wanna get hold of the, the email list. Um, but this is a free offer to help you take your sales, take your business conversion, take your self-determination, self-sufficiency, self-mastery when it comes to business success to the next level. So I just want to say thanks for joining me this morning. What time is it? A short, sharp session. Feel free to touch base, share this information, share this webinar with your friends. And as they get your sales debrief checklist download uh, here, click the link below and let me help you and your team um, play the game better. Welcome back from coronavirus. We're on the other side of it now. I saw Lilo down the gym this morning at the surf club. Um, it's time for action, folks. Want to take action? Touch base with us at Lee Farnell, Everyday Empowerment Institute. Thanks for watching. You guys on Facebook Live, you guys on Instagram, and you guys on Zoom. Look forward to talking with you again next Tuesday. See you soon. Bye.